This was an airfield. Now not a soul is here. Empty. Empty hangars. The control tower. Once the very nerve center of the airfield. And now... Derelict. No more happy landings. The crew room. Telephone numbers scribbled on the wall. A pin-up girl. A name, Johnny. A sign on the floor. All that is left of people who lived here. And now, sheep are returning to this English field, once mentioned in the Doomsday Book. It was very different in... Pilot Officer Penrose, sir? Yes. Oh, I'm your Batman, sir. Jones is the name. Oh, right. Uh, this is your chest of drawers, sir. Flight Lieutenant Archdale, he's been keeping a lot of his stuff in here, sir. But if you speak to him nicely, he won't mind moving them. He's a nice gentleman, Mr. Archdale. That is tunic? Yes, sir. That's his best. The one he wears when he goes into Shepley. <laughs> he's got a good reason for going into Shepley, if I know anything. Who the fuss he makes about his buttons in the evening? He got this DFC, sir, for that low level deal over Rotterdam. I expect you read about it. Yes, I did. Is there a raid on? Uh, no, sir. Well, at least not here. It's over at Marsden, seven miles away. Jerry's been giving them all the morning, poor devils. Yes, I thought I heard the sirens going in Shepley. Oh, we don't take shelter for sirens here, sir. But if here whistles being blown, you take my tip and run like a ruddy rabbit. Jonesy, you silly clot. You sent me dicing without my lighter. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I took it away to mend it. It won't take a minute. I had no idea you were flying, sir. Just been up on an air test. And what happened? I come into land, sideslipped to miss one of those damp bomb craters, get myself caught up in someone else's slipstream, and Ruddy nearly prang the kite. <laughs> Bounced for ten minutes. <laughs> Lucky the CO didn't see it. I'm ever so sorry, sir. I'll go and get it now. Oh, Mr. Penrose, sir. You just got in. Oh, hello. Oh, I heard you were coming. My name's Archdale. Yes, I know. I see it. I've taken up much more room than I should. I'll hear some of my stuff. I... Oh, don't bother. There's a package of room. You're putting them in my flight. That's B flight. Well, straight from OTU, aren't you? Yes. What are the rates you? Above average. I uh, know, um, average. Oh, well, we'll soon change all that. There's a bit of a do on this afternoon. It's apt to get a bit chilly at 15,000. I thought the daylight blenheims were doing mainly low-level jobs. Mm, all levels, all jobs. There's nothing the old blenheim won't do if you treat her right. You are, sir. Oh, thank you, Jonesy. Mm. And Christopher? <laughs> sort of, yes. Now, what are we going to do with all this stuff of mine, Jonesy? Well, I don't know, I'm sure, sir. So I can pinch a chest of drawers from that Mr. Thompson's room. The one that uh, bought it yesterday. Oh, good idea. What's that thing mean? Oh, that? Oh. Got it in the jelly train in peacetime. It means under the wash basin there finds itself a pot. <laughs> well, I looked under the wash basin and they didn't find itself any such thing, so I pinched it. <laughs> Sentiment's a bit crude, but it's quite decorative, don't you think? <laughs> well, that's Hapney Field. Come on, quick. 
attached to us. Ten chance three against thirty. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh. Hello, Tiny. Hello, David. Frankly, I'm scared. Don't like them as close as this. This is Penrose. Just joined the squadron. Oh. Tiny Williams, controller. Shocking type. How do you do? How do you do? I thought I heard something. Let's get to the shelter. Right through to the end. Come on, don't jam the doorway. Hurry up. Where did that one fall? By the market square, it looks like dough! There's early. I hear it now. They had a shelter over at last and this morning. Over 50 dead and locked, still buried. Kick him, somebody. I'm only telling you what I heard. The trouble is you always hear such ruddy depressing things. Funny how Jerry always comes over to our PT time, Sarge, isn't it? Don't you worry, my boy. You were Mr. PT. More ruddy craters. Makes you sick. You break your back filling them in, and Jerry comes over and digs up some more. That's the CEO. This is Pilot Officer Penrose, sir. He arrived today. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Any relation of Nipper Penrose, 840 Squadron? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> Grand type, old Nipper. How many hours have you done in Blenheim? Fifteen, sir. Fifteen? What do they think they're doing in OTUs these days? Well, I mean, I know there's a bit of a flap on at the moment, but fifteen hours, it's a bit thick, I must say. Passed out pretty high on this course, sir. Did you? Mr. Show. Above average? Uh, no, sir, average. Well, I can't promise you much time to settle down. The squadron is pretty hard work just at the moment. Yes, sir. All clear. Come along to the crew room, meet the blokes. Right. Well, if Jerry thinks he can put Haveny Field out of action, he's making a big mistake. As long as we've got 200 clear yards of turf, we'll get out somehow. Line shoot. These fighter types, you know. Top button undone. Victory rolls. Bad show, I think. That's two of them. Can you see the third? No, sir. Mind you, I'm not saying they're not doing a good job at the moment. No, Shepley 165. Hello? Golden Lion? Oh, who's that, Fred? Flight Lieutenant Archdale here. No, no, don't, don't bother her now. I just want to know that everything was all right. Who's that, Fred? It's the aerodrome, madam. Flight Lieutenant Archdale. Just wanted to know if we were all right. Hold on, sir. I'm putting you through now. Hello, David. No, nothing at all near here. Well, not really near. How's the airfield? Good. Thank you for ringing. Your snapshots? Yes. I've had them developed for you. A good show. I'll be down tonight. Oh, David. Sir? You weren't going on this afternoon's trip. Arthur. Sir. You will eat B-flight. Right. Penrose. I'm sending you up with Penrose. Give him a look around, see how he gets on. The sooner we get him operational, the better. Well, can't Arthur go with him, sir? No, David. Sorry. Now, we're all here. No, Just waiting for Mac. Well, that's all right. Oh, David, you'd better take a gunner with you. Who's Thompson's gunner? Clarkson. Sergeant Clark. Sir. I'm sending you up to stoot around with Pilot Officer Penrose. 
We don't want you running into 500 plus measures, miss. No, sir, we don't. So you better get a route from Ops. All right, sir. Sergeant. Well, chaps, as you know, the target for this afternoon is exactly the same as yesterday's, and the day before yesterday's, and the day before that. Calais, barge concentrations. Let's see, I think Bill Thompson was about your size. Thanks. Superstitious. Oh, uh, no. Let's go to sign the 700. There won't be a minute. I know. A dream, but now you're close to me. Home service has gone too. Punctual blighter, Jerry. Same time yesterday. Probably having another big shot at reaching London. Well, Penrose, what got you into the flying racket? Three pints of beer, I think. I don't know, really. I. Uh... Had to do something about it, and I felt I'd sooner do it this way than any other. What did you do before that? I was a schoolmaster at a secondary school. Oh. Afraid I'm just an amateur. There aren't any amateurs and professionals anymore. Just good pilots and bad pilots. The good pilots stay alive, and the bad ones don't. <laughs> and that's not true anymore either. Thanks. Break your blooming heart, wouldn't it? Just my luck. Another one of these fifteen-hour sprogs. Look out, here he is. Afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Port engines knock him in the ribs, she should, sir. Careful not to overeat her. Right. Well, she's a bit overdue for a major, sir. But the engineer and officer, he says we can't spare her. It's a wicked shame to treat aircraft like this, sir. Mark my words. No good will come of it. Thanks very much. His first take off worse than mine was. I doubt it. <laughs> well, you missed the control tower. Come on, chaps, time to get cracking. Fine sight, isn't it? missing, isn't there? Yes, we don't know which one yet. Had a good trip? Oh, not bad. Just a studio around, you know. How do you like flying Blenheims? Oh, very much. Take a bit of flying, of course, mm. but uh, I'd sooner handle them than the most types. You've flown a lot of types. Mm, fair enough, you know. Blenheims are uh, pretty easy. Mm. Suppose they'll um, make me operational straight away, won't they? No. Look, I'll fly a Blenheim to save your life. And it's not only your life to be considered, either. You go on operations when I think you're fit and not before. I only thought that with a shortage of pilots, you'd well, probably... if I let you fly on ops in your present state, I'd only be adding to the shortage. That landing was ruddy awful. Don't go, Tony. I want to speak to you presently. Yes, if you make another landing like that, I'll send you back to OTU. Battle of Britain or no Battle of Britain. Sorry. Why didn't you go around again? <laughs> Well, I thought I could get her down all right. Hmm. Well, next time you might remember that you've got other people flying with you. Right. Hello, Tiny. Hello, boy.
The CEO bought it this afternoon. That's what I wanted to see you about, Danny. I suppose they'll make me acting CEO. I see. I'll send another bloke up with you this afternoon, Penrose. Do some circuits and bumps. Yes, sir. And Penrose. I think you'll make a pilot, all right. Thanks. Oh, hello, sir. Hello, Sergeant. Sorry about making such a clot of myself. What do you mean, sir? That landing? Down. I've had worse than that, don't you worry. Old Bill Thompson, he used to be my pilot till he bought it. He used to do some real shakers. They break every bone in your body. Poor old Bill. Yours was nothing. Thanks. Going Shepley Way, Nobby? Yes, sir. I'll jump in. Thanks very much. What about you, Penrose? Oh, thanks very much, sir. Lieutenant. This is Pilot Officer Penrose. How do you do? How do you do? Don't forget to wipe your feet before you go in the lounge. I've told you dozens of times before. I'm most terribly sorry. She the manager is? Mm. Bit of a tartar, isn't she? Oh, a bark's worse than a bite. What, you boys? Have a drink. I think you deserve it. Oh, no, thanks. Oh, come on, don't be shy. Palmer's the name. Oh, uh, this is Pilot Officer Penrose. How are you? How do you do? Two large island flings. Must have bought the old firm, you know. Well, been giving the old barges a caning. That's the stuff. Only save a few jellies for the LDV, you know. I'm rather up with my pie. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I'll be fun. Mrs. Winterton, Major and Minor, Mr. Penrith. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Do you care for a drink, Miss Winterton? No, thank you. We don't drink. Oh. What's that you're making? An Air Force pullover. For anyone particular? No. Just for the comforts fund. Oh. It's a bit um, difficult making those squiggly bits around the collar, isn't it? No, it isn't really. You see, when you get to the end... Iris, dear, I really think we'd better go and have our dinner now. Otherwise, we shall find it's all been eaten by the non-residents. Yes, Auntie. Oh, Miss Todd, you know I never complain. Yes, but Miss Winterton. Help. Will you come to my office after dinner? Iris! Coming, Auntie. Now, if they drop a bomb on Auntie instead of Apney Field, she need it. Oh, hello. Hello. Can I help you? Yes, here. You wipe while I wash. One of the bar boys left this morning. Called up. Oh. Did you go over this afternoon? No. The squadron did. How was it? We lost our CEO. Squadron leader Carter. I'm terribly sorry. Yes, it's a bad show. He was a great friend of yours, wasn't he? I knew him pretty well. Is there any hope? No one saw him or his crew bail out. My person was missing, I suppose. For three months, anyway. I think if I had to hear someone was killed, I'd rather hear it at once than hear it first as missing. It's just rather an ugly word, isn't it? I know a kind of poem called Missing. Do you? Less said the better, the bill unpaid, the dead letter. No roses at the end of Smith, my friend. Last words don't matter, for there are none to flatter. Words will not fill the post of Smith, the ghost. For Smith, our brother, only son of loving mother, the ocean lifted, stirred, leaving no word. You wrote that yourself. I try and say things I feel that way sometimes. <laughs> sort of hobby. I didn't know. You're the only one who does. Or whoever will. 
Miss Todd, glasses, please. Fine bar boy I am, spouting poetry at you. German pilot says to the girl guide, which way is to the station? And she said, I don't know. I'm a parachutist there myself. <laughs> not bad, eh? Yeah, not bad. <laughs> Going to bed already? Eh? Oh. Yes. Auntie doesn't like staying up late. Well, I suppose there's not very much to stay up for in a place like Shepley. No, there isn't. Is there a cinema? Oh, yes. Well, couldn't we go along? Iris, right? dear, I thought I asked you to get the room warm. Yes, Auntie. I sometimes wonder whether these modern girls ever think of anyone but themselves. I've got one for the swing doors. Uh, no, thanks. Come on. Hello, we've had it. No one here. Here about the man in the shelter. Uh, the woman in the shelter. Wait a minute. Uh, have you seen Archdale? Yeah. Uh, no, but I shouldn't worry. He's always last man out. You know, loves old sweet song. <laughs> so this well, man... Well, uh, good night. The man in the... Oh. Cheerio. Here, give me a final one, will you? I've got a chill. I've honest... <coughs> Tell them it's for medicinal purposes. Mr. Palmer, you do go on. <laughs> I'd kill him. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Good night. Good night, David. I know we shall be late. There's plenty of time. Don't fuss. There. This skirt's still far too long. I shall tread on it. I know I shall. No, you won't. Don't I look a sight? Yes, you do look a sight. I'll get your bouquet. say that to me has fallen the lot to propose the health of the, uh, <laughs> if I may coin a phrase, happy pair. <laughs> <laughs> to the bridegroom, I would say this. May his matrimonial takeoff be straight and smooth. May his climb through the clouds of married bliss be swift and controlled. <laughs> may his navigation be sure, his airspeed steady, and may all his ends and troubles be little ones. <laughs> <laughs> to the bride, I would merely say this. Oh, oh, there's that man again. We better get down the shelter. Come on, slide along, Corporal. Slide along. Have a wee bit. That's it. Thank you so much. More ruddy craters. Half penny feel. <laughs> Half penny. That's a funny kind of a name. <laughs> well, it seems in 1066 the owner used to pay a hay half penny rent for it. That was our biggest crater over there, by that Boston. Port engine still not giving me anything like the right boost. Why wasn't it fixed? I thought it was, so we worked on it all morning. 
If you want to break our ruddy necks, you know, you're going the right way about it. Now, see, it's fixed by 14.30 this afternoon, eh? Yes, sir. Shall I put it U.S. then, sir? I said fix it, didn't I? Yes, sir. What's the matter, Dad? If you ask me, son, I think it's about time that young chap had a bit of a rest. Yeah. This way, sir. This is the officer's mess. Uh -huh. And this is the anti-room. What a Gee, what a honey. Hot diggity dog, what a bombing ship. And that's supposed to be American. Quiet. Yeah, gentlemen, I'm telling you, the B-17, <coughs> or the Flying Fortress, as we call her, is surely the greatest bombing ship that God ever made. Why, cruises at 650. Well, let's say 645. We mustn't exaggerate, must we, gentlemen? <coughs> and furthermore, this bombing ship is the only bombing ship that'll fly in ever-decreasing circles until finally it shoots itself down. Or conversely, it uh, disappears of its own... Uh, <coughs> Gosh. Uh, the B-17 is a mighty fast machine, son, but I don't think it's quite as fast as all that. No, sir. I mean, uh, yes, sir. I, I mean... Uh, uh, I think I understand what you mean. Would you, uh, would you have a beer, sir? Oh, thank you. Gentlemen, Colonel Page. How do you do, sir? Oh, thank you. Is it true, sir? Um, I mean, about the rumor. What rumor? Oh, uh, that. Well, as you'll all get to hear about it sooner or later, uh, yes, it's perfectly true. That Hapney Field's being taken over by the, by the uh, American Air Corps, sir? By uh, the 8th Air Force. What sort of aircraft? Uh, A-20s? No, B-17s. Uh, the Flying Fortress, as we call her. <laughs> <laughs> You've had it again, crew. Right, well, tell her I'll be right down, will you? Oh, hello, Peter. Is that engine all right? No, yeah, they're working on it now. Is it going to be U.S. for this due this afternoon? Well, it better not be or I'll murder that ground crew. What's the genesis? Still the Middle East? Well, how would that appeal to you, Prune? What do you think of that, Peter? Soft, languorous nights. The canopy of stars, the magic of the Orient. I'm going to be a she kisses plaything. I've left that lighter of mine at home. Will you come down with me, Peter? Right. You wouldn't say no to a she kiss, would you, Peter? Oh, yes, of course I forgot. You would. Little Miss uh, Thingley Bob at the Lion. What do you mean? Nothing at all. Well, then, for Pete's sake, shut up. Oh, by the way, Peter, I was having an argument with the bloke the other day. How many trips have you done? He, he said 41. 43, why? Oh, this is what I said. Well, it's not bad for one tour. What do you mean, one tour? Well, after this afternoon's trip, you'll have finished your first tour of Ops. Congratulations, Peter. I'm not being taken off flying, am I? Yes, for a bit. Your posting came through this morning. Controllers, of course. Oh, my. Whose idea was all this? Now listen, David. I came into the raft to fly. Not to sit on the ground using a lot of brains I haven't got. If you applied for me to be taken off flying, you'd damn well better apply for me to be put back again. So don't blame me for putting up a moan. In fact, I knew you would. And that's why I didn't tell you before. How could you have done if my posting only came through this morning? So you did apply? All right, yes, I did. Darling, where are you? Don't make such a noise, you'll wake Peter. Hello, Peter. Hello, Dolly. She's in there. Alone? She was. Good. How's our Peter? Come and have a look. <laughs> Is it all right? Yes, why? Well, it looks sort of screwed up. Well, of course it looks screwed up. So did you at his age. Well, not as screwed up as all that, surely. <laughs> Sure, it's not in pain. Of course not. Can I pick it up? No, David, please don't. You'll ruin my morning if you wake him. And it's him, not it. Please. Oh, It'll always be it to me until it begins to look a little more human. Yeah, that's the way to hold a baby. Our M.O. showed me. Oh, oh, oh here. Yeah. <laughs> Darling. Shh. There, did naughty Daddy wake him? Oh, Lord, naughty Daddy's got to get the hell out of here. Uh, darling, I left my lighter in our room. Did you see it? No, it wasn't with your things. Oh. Well, I'll just dash out and have a look. David, mm -hmm. is there something on? Yes. I know I shouldn't have asked, but is there anything important? Oh, Lord, no, just the usual stooge around. <coughs> but surely we could have dinner alone somewhere. Auntie would never agree to it. Well, I'll, I'll ask her tonight. As a matter of fact, I'll have something to ask you, too. Oh? Anything very important? Well, uh, it um, depends which way you look at it. 
I can't find it. It must be at the station after all. You will find it, won't you? Oh, yes, I find it, all right. Yes, sir. I think I know where it is. Give me a ring when you get down. Have I ever forgotten? No, not yet. Oh, darling. Ah, there you are, Miss Todd. I suppose I should say Mrs. Archdale, but I can never get used to it. There's something I want to see you about. If you'll go down to my office, Miss Winterton, I'll be with you in five minutes. Now I'm up the stairs. I think I'd better stay up them, don't you? They're so bad for my heart, you know. It's about my bottle of Worcester sauce. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. David! Yes, darling? It doesn't matter. See you tonight. Now, I noticed this morning at breakfast when we had fish cakes, remember? And of course, I always like Worcester sauce with fish cakes, especially when they're the least little bit tasteless. I noticed that someone had been tampering with my bottle. Peter. Okay. Goodbye, David. Bye. Well, see you tonight, eh? Promise. Promise. Don't talk to any strange men, will you? Everything all right? If you have any trouble with it now, you can knock my ruddy head off. I will, if I'm still here to do it. Keep him fairly close, going over. Right. How are you feeling, all right? Of course I'm feeling all right. I've got Prune standing by, you know, if you I've got a controller yet, you know. Look, Pete, you're not still sulking with me, are you? I'm sorry, David. It, it was a bit of a shock, you know, hearing it like that. I know. I suppose, uh, 43 trips is quite a lot, isn't it? A heck of a lot. Coming down to the lion tonight? You bet. Don't forget, keep in close.
Come in. Now, hello, Tiny. Hello, man. I've just heard. I'm terribly sorry. It's bad show, isn't it? Yes. How did it happen? Light flak emplacement on the roof of the power station. I suppose there's no chance that he might... Nope. He went straight in from about 500 feet. Caught fire at once. I'm terribly sorry. Well, he should have evaded after dropping his bombs. He used to tell us to do it often enough. I suppose he wanted to mark the bursts. Hmm, suppose so, yeah. That's, that's how Campbell went, wasn't it? Your shoe, sir. Oh, thanks. Nice and clean now. Mr. Parsons has just told me the news about squadron leader Archdale, sir. Yeah, it's a bad show, isn't it? Terrible, sir. Plain terrible. I don't know when I've been so upset. He was my nicest gentleman. Of course, it's worst of all for you, sir. You being a particular pal of his, I... Nice room you've got here. Mm, not bad, is it? <laughs> no, I, I hate mine. Do you mind if I ask the PMC if I can move in here? Yes, if you like. Peter, you're going to tell his wife, aren't you? No. I think you should. After all, you know her much better than any of us. I said no, I won't do it. Just to think. What's the to tell her? Your husband crashed into a hill in France and got burnt. We're all very sorry because he was a good bloke and we all liked him very much. You'd better get the adjutant to write her one of those letters of his. He knows what to say. God knows he's had plenty of practice. He'd got no right to get married and have a kid. We none of us have. There's someone here to see you, madam. He's out in the hall. Did he say what he wanted, Elsie? Don't know, madam. It's flying off at the Penrose. Thank you. Hello, Peter. Fred, Mr. Palmer wants two whiskies and sodas. Very good, madam. Come to my office, will you? I know what you've come to tell me, Peter. You do? Yes, you see, he didn't ring up this evening. And I counted one plane missing when you came back over the town. Tell me just one thing. How much hope is there? I see. No hope at all. Not very much, I'm afraid. I thought perhaps there might have been some question of missing. It does happen, I know. Someone bails out, no one sees them, and then later they're reported as... I'm afraid he was too low to bail out. His plane crashed into a kind of a hill. Whatever happened would have been instantaneous. You saw it? Yes, I saw it. Thank you for coming to tell me, Peter. I know what it must have meant to you, but I couldn't have borne it from anyone else. Thank you. Don't know what to say, I'm afraid. I've brought a few things down which I found up in my room. Nothing very important, just uh, handkerchiefs and socks and things. I thought I'd better bring them down. Oh, and they're 
was a piece of paper with his writing on it, which I thought you might like. I can't see without my glasses. What is it? It's, uh, it's a bit of poetry, I think. Will you read it for me? Well, uh... Please. Do not despair for Johnny Head in air. She sleeps as sound as Johnny Underground. Fetch out no shroud for Johnny in the cloud and keep your tears for him in after years. Better by far for Johnny the bright star to keep your head and see his children fed. I suppose uh, he uh, must have uh, copied it out of some book or something. Yes, uh, I suppose he must. Is there anything else that you, you would like me to do? No, thank you, Peter. I'll come down tomorrow and see you, of course, that's uh, if you want me to. Yes, I'll want you to. Well, I act... Um, Better be getting back to the station. I volunteered to take some of his orderly officer. You have to work tonight? Oh, well, I said I would, you know. I see. Oh, I forgot. He... He left his lighter behind. I found it after we got down. Probably upset him a bit, having to fly without it. Yes, it would have done. Thank you, Peter. So you kept your promise? What promise? To come down, see me. Well, I'm... Uh, I'm afraid I, I've, I've got to get back to the station. Oh, when shall I see you then? I don't know. I'm uh, awfully sorry about tonight. You see, uh, Yanks are going to be like. <laughs> Goodness only knows, old man. Present her! <laughs> Would you mind, sir? Yes, of course. Here we go. Oh, thank you, sir. Got it? Lovely. I've been looking for you all over the place. What's going on? Got to get all your stuff out. Yanks are taking over E-Block. Oh, damn and blast. <laughs> I know. 
You've got to be quick. Excuse me, sir. Where are they now? Oh, over in the mess, wandering about, chewing the cud, shooting the bull, calling each other buddy. Buddy. Oh. Hello. Sorry to burst in, but they told me number three. Oh, that's okay. My name's Penrose. Mine's Hollis. John Hi. Hollis. Hi. Hello. Afraid I haven't finished getting my stuff out yet. Well, that's all right. Take your time. Hi. The camp town ladies sing this song. Do da, do da. Unter dem. What's that? That? Oh, that's just a thing the uh, bloke I used to share this room with pinched from a German train in peacetime. The camp town race tracks five miles long. No, do da, day. What's it mean? It means under the wash basin there finds itself a pot. <laughs> I'll take it down in a minute. Oh. I kind of like to keep it there. <laughs> Hello, my jolly old fellow. Boy, these English slay me. There's an orderly in my room asks me if I like to be called in the mornings with a cup of tea. Excuse me. Oh, hello. That goon's name is Frizzelli, the bombardier with me. Flying officer Penrose, Joe. Right, Noy. Hello. And this is Wally Becker. How are you? How's it do? Nice layout you got here. And what do you know, Joe? They got a lot of women here, on the station. Hey, is that true? Well, there are some wefs. Well, they're girls, aren't they? Uh, yes, I suppose so. That's all, brother. <laughs> all right. Are you moving out altogether? Uh, no, I'm staying on for a bit. I'm controller. Oh, oh you're, you're not a flyer, then? No, I'm not a flyer. They had A-20s here. You know, Johnny Boston's, they call mm -hmm. them. Yeah, not a bad little ship, that A-20. All right for reconnaissance. I'm not looking forward to bringing a fort into this field. I'm not looking forward to being in it when you do, brother. Well, we just better make darn sure we don't bring our bombs back. Heck, we won't ever bring our bombs back. Our bombs are going right where they're meant to, right on that little old target. Zonk, 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 every time. Sure, we're all glad to know that. Oh, it won't be me. It'll be the bomb site. Say, there's nothing to bombing with that little baby to do all the work for you. I tell you, those heinies are in for the shock of their young lives. Say, uh, have you ever seen a flying fortress? Uh, yes, from a distance. Like a trip in one? Well, I would, yes, thanks very much. Not a, not a real mission, of course, they... I, uh, I thought you said you weren't a flyer. Uh, I'm not. I, I was once, though. What'd you fly? Uh, A-20, just for Constance's work, you know. Well, I'll see you all in the mess. Well, of all the dirty it's tricks... That big mouth of yours, boy. You had to come to you. Yeah, dash bad form, old boy. Bit of a cow shot, huh, man? T. T. I say. Yeah? Can I have some more milk, please? Sure thing. Hey, Spud, any more hot milk? Not hot. Cold. Hot in coffee, cold in tea. Anything you say, it's your tea. No, thank you. Oh, thank you. They don't warm the pot, you know. I've watched them making it. <laughs> oh, well, it, it's liquid and it's warm. I, I was afraid they were going to abolish it altogether. Oh, but they would have done. Indeed, they were going to. If I myself hadn't protested to the Colonel. Nobly done, Tinkerbell. They are, bud. <clears throat> I say, by the way, I found out what that awful brown stuff is that they put on the table at dinner. What is it? Peanut butter. Mm. Made from peanuts, I suppose. So I imagine. Mm -hmm. I've tried it. It's revolting. <laughs> hey. What's for supper? Hash. Oh, that's what I thought. Flying clothes in the mess. Yes, well, we must try and rise above it, Tinkerbell. Think there may be anything on tomorrow, in the way of ops? Ah, that, of course, I couldn't say, uh, even if I knew. All I do know is that they're exceptionally keen to get cracking. I grant them that. They're as keen as mustard. Yes, sir. They've only got 12 forts. Ah, yes, but then as a bombardier, I think that's what they call themselves, said to me, 12 forts can make the hell of a mess of any uh, gosh darn target. Apparently, with this new bomb site of theirs, they can drop a bomb into a barrel from 30,000 feet. Zonk. Well, well. Last night, a very strong force of RAF Lancasters and Halifaxes raided Bremen for the fourth night running. Oh, for Pete's sake. What's eating you, Joe boy? Why do we have to be sitting around here all the time listening to what the RAF did last night? We've been here over two months now. When are we going to get started? 
Soon enough, Roselli. And when we do, maybe you'll be wishing yourself back at that radio again. Who knows? Evening, Penrose. Uh, good evening, sir. First of all, Elsie, a nice large whiskey and soda. Sorry, Mr. Palmer, we've run out of whiskey. Well, again? I'm afraid so, Mr. Palmer. We had some more Americans in last night. Will you have beer? Oh, I suppose so. What a war. Tell me, dear, isn't that the RAF boy who used to be such a friend of yours? Yes, Auntie. Uh, uh, waitress. Doesn't seem to come down as often as he used to, does he, dear? No, Aunt. Funny. Get on with your soup, dear. It'll get cold. Hey, sister, bring that check, will you? We've been waiting here for 20 minutes for it. What is it you're wanting? The check, for crying out loud, the check. I'll see Miss Todd about it. And who the heck is hey. Miss Todd? Pipe down, Joe. Well, Joe. Johnny, I'm only... Well, Mr. the picture. Uh -uh. Not a shot like that. Why the heck not? Oh, devilish bad form, old boy. Look, is this supposed to be a restaurant or a funeral parlor? That's all I want to know. What's the idea of talking in whispers when we eat? It's kind of a sort of a custom over here. What do you mean, like eating's a thing to be ashamed of or something? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't get it. What exactly is it you require? Uh, oh, it's all right, miss. It's all right. It's perfectly all right. We don't require a thing. We're just going to go on sitting here till Christmas. Please, it's just a check. I mean the bill, if you don't mind. Oh, the bill. Yes. The waitress understood you wanted to cash a check, and it's strictly against our rules. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. It's just that we are a little bit pressed for time, you know. Here, um, do you, you think that this will cover it? Did you have coffee? Yes. Is that what you call it? Do you wish to make a complaint about the coffee? No, of course he doesn't. No, it, it's very good. Very. It's just, he's just trying to be funny, you know. Thank you for explaining. I'll bring your change. Thank you. Oh, all these sourpuss chains give me a pain. <laughs> you two characters go along and collect the transport. I'll wait for the change. Okay, I'll settle up with you later. Okay. Watch out for that human rattlesnake, boy. She'll eat you alive. Yeah. I heard you were here. I couldn't telephone. We both got to report to intelligence, or what they call S2, after dinner. Something on? Hmm, dawn tomorrow. Soup any good? Hmm, not bad. Well, hello there. Well, well, well. How are you? Glad to see you. How you been? Hmm? Hello, Keith. How's tricks? Huh? Oh, trying to strangle me, huh? Okay, go right ahead, see if I care. That's right. Pull away, old fella. Or should I say old lady? Which is it? Old fella? Oh, caught. What's his name? Peter. Peter. Nice, well-behaved baby. That's what you think. Whose is it? Mine. Yours. Oh, I beg your pardon. Why? Appropriating him like that. Most mothers don't like it. No, they think you're going to poison him or something. Oh, I don't mind. I always feel rather flattered when someone pays my son a little attention. Mary doesn't, but that's my wife. She hates it if some stranger gets kind of familiar with our Emmy. How old is Emmy? Going on four. We've got a boy too, George. He's six. You wouldn't care to see a snapshot of him, would you? Why, yes, I'd love to. You sure it wouldn't bore you now? Not at all. Please show me. Good. Uh, you're in for it. There. What a pretty little boy. Huh. You better not let him hear you say that. And then this next one, that's George and Emmy together. And that's Mary with me. It isn't a good picture of Mary. You know, I took it myself last leave before I came overseas. She was kind of squinting at the sun, you see. She hasn't seen it yet. She stopped me showing it around. I think she's beautiful. Thank you for letting me see them. Thank you for letting me let you see them. Do you hear from them often? Oh, Mary writes most days, you know. They come in batches, though, that's the trouble. Nothing for weeks, and you get kind of worried, and then suddenly, you're snowed under. The children must miss you very much. Oh, no, I shouldn't think so. It doesn't mean much at that age, does it? No. 
Where's his father? Overseas? He was killed three months ago. over here very long? Uh, no. Johnny? Hey, Johnny. What the hell? Okay. Oh, I beg your pardon. Okay, I'm coming. Do you mind not shouting like that when you come into the hotel? It's apt to disturb the other guests. Yes, miss. Certainly, miss. I'm very sorry, miss. Well, see you sometime again, I hope. I mean, you'll be around. Oh, yes, I'll be around. Good. Goodbye. Goodbye. What was she bawling you out for? Not washing behind your ears? <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Are you, uh, going out tonight? Well, just see a picture, have a couple of drinks, maybe. Might come along. Uh, no, thanks. No, no, it's not that. It's just that, um, well, if you don't mind me saying so, I think it might be a pretty good idea if you had an early night tonight. Come on, Mark. No picture for us. Back to the station. I'll be in bed. Johnny, look. I no said picture. bed. Scram. Okay. Good night. Good night. Um, thanks. It's okay. I didn't see it before. All this. You bet. Good night. Good night. Hello. Hello. I haven't seen you for, well, ages. It I know. We, we've been pretty busy up at the station, you know. And yes, I of course. Haven't had much of a chance to get down here. Well, what's what's your news? Well, nothing much. Auntie's made another application for a deferment. Oh, Lord. She says she's trained me now in her illnesses. And if I leave her to join up, it'll be fatal. Oh, I see it would, absolutely. But I'm allowed to stay on at the cottage hospital as a part-time nurse. Oh, that's something, isn't it? Yes. What's your news? Oh, nothing much. Just, you know, the usual sort of stooging, boring. Oh, hello, Tiny. Hello, ma'am. Well, we ought to get cranking. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Oh, no, no, you, you wait here and I, I'll go and get the car. Is there any chance of seeing you soon? I'm afraid not, you know. We've we've got a basin full of stuff to get through yes, up sir, there. Yes, I see. It's perfectly all right. I just wonder. Look, I I know uh, what you're thinking. You're not right, you know. Aren't I? I wish that I could explain it. You don't have to explain anything, Peter. There's nothing to explain. I'm terribly sorry. It's perfectly all right. Goodbye, Peter. How long do you think this blasted war is going on for? Oh, years and years and years, I should think. Spring 1950 is my personal bet. Do you think any of us have the right to get ourselves tangled up until it's over? What do you mean, financially or emotionally. Wives, children, things like that. <laughs> Why ask me, old man? Personally, I've never had the old urge. Why don't you write to Auntie Thingamajig in the Daily What's It? I'm serious, you know. I know you are. And I know you're thinking about David. I'm telling him the truth. It's not a subject that I'm qualified to give an opinion on. But you could tell me how you'd feel if you were... Well, if you were in the same sort of spot as I'm in, couldn't you? I could wouldn't do any good. You see, I'm on the ground. Any time now, you may be on ops again. Anything I said couldn't have any possible bearing on the matter. Good luck, Colonel. Thanks. We'll need it. I guess this is it. Quite some moment, isn't it? Yeah, but not for making a noise like a speech. I didn't need to have a pep talk for the fellas. They don't need it. You're all the lousiest crew any poor pilot was ever stuck with. And I love you, so come on, get up them stairs. Come on, let's go, Joe.
another pint, please. Ready? Oh. Oh, here's the food. Yeah, it is. Right. So. Oh. Well, here's the forts. Here's the lengths. Cheerio, Nob. Some people get all the luck. <laughs> Where are you now, Flight? Over at Tetworth Gunnery School, sir. Can you imagine Nobby instructing? <laughs> <laughs> I bet he puts the wind up the pupils. I oh, know, the pupils put the wind up me, they're so ruddy good. A little binders. You applied for Lanks, Nobby? Yes, sir, hundreds of times. I'll have another crack at it. I'll pull a few strings and try and get you with me again, eh? Will you? Sure. Now, that sounds a bit of all right. Here, fellas, I just had a great story that will kill you. There was an Englishman, an Irishman and a Scotsman travelling in a train, see? Um, please, could we have three beers? Yes, sir. Light ales. Thanks. And when the man came up the car to collect the tickets... When the man came out the corridor to collect the tickets, the Englishman turned to the Scotsman. What do you think he said? What are you chaps drinking? Oh, hello. Oh, hello thanks. There. We've just ordered. Oh, come on. Have another. Well, okay. Thanks. I guess we've got the right to get a little bit plastered tonight. I guess you have. From all accounts, that was a grand job you did over there today. Ah. We walked away from mm, the yeah, yeah. Here, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Ah. Thank you. What are you having? The beer's good. Well, this is beer, isn't it? Well, it's a little uh, ladylike, you know. Oh, thanks. OK, we'll have what you got there. Right, four pints of dark, Tom, please. Uh, chalk it up on the old slate, will you? I'm going to have my cigarette now, dear. Oh, I must have left my lighter upstairs. Run and get it for me, will you, dear? Allow me. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure is uh, all mine. What charming manners. Hello, fellas. Hiya, right, baby. Right, There's your right. beaker. Thanks a lot. Say, listen, uh, Flight Lieutenant, I guess I owe you a bit of an apology. Hmm? Well, if I gave you or anybody else the idea that bombing targets over the other side was going to be easy, I'll eat my words right here and now. But I defy any other bombardier in the air corps to have done any better under those conditions. Funny thing, that group ahead of us hit that target smack -o. You know, zonk, zonk, zonk. How wide were your berths? How wide would you like? We may have killed a couple of enemy cows, that's about all. Ah, enemy occupied cow. I'll lay off, <laughs> fellas, will you? I'll do better next time. We live and learn. Yeah, I sure hope we learn. We only just lived. What were they, fucker wolves? Yeah, they're good, all right. Like you fellas said they were. Only like some of us didn't believe. Yeah, oh, there it is. Oh, Ooh, well. biggies. Ah. Ranking you. Thanks a lot. Beautiful. Well, good luck. Thanks, see you. I'm celebrating myself tonight. I've been posted. Lancasters. Flying again. Huh? You bet. I swear. Uh, you mean good show, old boy. <laughs> Congratulations, show. anyway. The ticket collector said, this man's expired. So the Irishman said, we got him, but his ticket hasn't. <laughs> Not bad, <laughs> eh? <laughs> Here, come to think of it, I oh, know a better one than that. Goebbels, Captain, Captain. Goebbels said to Hitler. <laughs> Excuse me, will you? Eh. Uh, yeah. Here. Here. This will make you laugh, this one. This is a good one. Goebbels said to Hitler, um, Goebbels said to Goering, no, wait a minute, uh, Goering said to Goebbels, oh, it's not right, wait a minute, I'll tell you, it's very funny, this one. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. You boys care for a drink? Well, thanks so much, we're already swimming. Oh, in hey, stuff. wait a minute, Johnny, this is our night out. Come Joe on. says yes. <laughs> that was a terrific show you boys put up this morning. Oh, no. Yes, I'm sure I'm right, it, it is, it's, it's, Go yes, that's right, it's Goering said to go. Uh, Hello, Nobby. Is he still at it? Yes. This is Nobby Clark, worst air gunner in the RAF. How do you do? How are you? Oh, yeah. Sit down, Nobby. I hear you blokes put up a pretty good show this afternoon. Yeah, Here, you right. didn't get the end of my story. I can't remember the middle bit, but the end was because the higher you go, the Fuhrer. <laughs> Not bad, eh? Uh, oh, by the way, I hear you chaps did a good job of work this afternoon. Congratulations. <laughs> now, don't drink that wallop. Fred, large island flings all round. Here, perhaps you'd all like to hear this story. It's a good one. Make you laugh, this. Gobbing said to um, <coughs> Goros, <coughs> Gobble, or well, would you believe you? Oh, it was Right. 
Break it up, break it up. Break it up, I'll tell you why. Miss Winterton objects. Oh, what? I think she, uh, I think she feels like little chamber music. <laughs> so, uh, what about giving one of the old ones, eh? Shall we? Yes, let's go. My name is McNamara, I'm the leader of the band. And though we're small in number, we're the best in all the land. Oh, I am the conductor and Come we often here. have to play. With all the best musicians you read about today. When the drums go bang, the cymbals clang, the horns are blaze away. McCarty pops the old bassoon, but all the pipes will play. Oh, Hennessy, Tennessee, toodles of fruit, my word is something grand. I'm pretty to old Ireland boys, it's McNamara's man. Oh! <laughs> Yes, Miss Winterton. Now, you know I never complain. Go on up, dear. You know I never complain. But this time, really, I mean to say... The singing. Singing? Yes, I know. I'm terribly sorry. But it is nearly closing time. Closing time? They should all have been thrown into the street an hour ago. I entirely agree, but I don't think I'm quite strong enough to do it. I assure you, Miss Winterton, I don't do it. Oh, Peter, really. Good night, Miss Winterton. Good night, Mr. President. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, I'll be up in a minute. Well, uh, Peter, what is it now? Well, these two gentlemen, very good friends of mine both, Americans though they may be, yes. desire to cash a check. Oh, all right, you'll find blank check forms on the desk in my office. Oh, oh thanks so much. Charlie. Yeah? Did you see that? He actually kissed her. Come on, Lug. I just want one word with you. Well? I've been posted away. Lancaster's. I'm afraid I won't see you after tonight, not for a bit anyway. Oh, Peter, I'm sorry. At least, I'm glad for you. It's what you wanted, isn't it? More than anything else, yeah. Iris will be terribly upset. Have you told her? Uh, no. No, Tolly. I, um, I was wondering whether you'd um, tell her for me uh, after I've gone, you know? Just uh, <laughs> say it happened very suddenly and just say goodbye to her for me, would you? Peter. I know it's none of my business, but what exactly is wrong between you two? Nothing, Dolly, really. Nothing. It's just that, uh, that I, I can't possibly explain it. Let me just say goodbye to you, eh? That's for you. And that's for her. And that's for her again. Check forms, check forms, check forms. There aren't any check forms. For Johnny. Hey, what's this? Johnny, look. Hmm. The old girl's written your poem. Oh, put it away, Joel. Maybe private. Private? I'll say it's private. She's put her flaming heart on paper. Poor Johnny. Do not despair for Johnny head and air. He sleeps as sound as Johnny underground. What the heck does that mean? Any idea? Hmm. Put it away. Pet shop, no shroud for Johnny and... Looking for the check points, ma'am. It's just occurred to me that if you want to cash a check to pay for your last round of drinks, please don't bother. Have them on the house. Oh, well, that's darn kind of you, but we couldn't possibly... Oh, please, I insist. And if you're very quick, you've just time to order another. Well, gee, that's swell of you, ma'am. I, I could argue for that. Uh, <clears throat> Wait a... Any more news from home? No, not since I last saw you. Have you been reading this? Well, we were looking for the blank check forms, you see. And Johnny happens to be my name, too, and Joe... And I'm sorry. That's all right. Your name's Johnny, is it? Yes, it is. Johnny Hollis. What did you think of this? I don't know that I quite understood it. I'm not much of an expert on poetry, I guess. No, me. Oh, we thought you'd written it. Oh, no. No, my husband wrote it. Oh. Now, why on earth should I tell you that? You're the only person in the world beside myself who knows. Now, why should I tell you? I don't know. Perhaps it's just the names. Yes, perhaps it is. But it makes me feel kind of privileged. I'm glad. Johnny? Hmm? You're not superstitious, are you? No, not me. Now, if it happens, it happens. 
No matter how many ladders you walk under. My husband used this lighter as a sort of St. Christopher. He was miserable if he flew without it. He flew without it the day he was killed. If he knew he didn't have it, he was probably worried. And if you're worried when you're flying, well, things can happen. If I give it to you, you won't feel that way about it, will you? No, I don't use lucky charms. I'd sure like to have it, though. It doesn't work very well as a lighter, I'm afraid. Oh, I can probably fix it. Anyway, it's a, it's a good thing to have. Thanks an awful lot. Oh, and Johnny. Yes? Uh, yes? No, I'm not going to tell you my Christian name because, well, just because. But people, some people anyway, call me Toddy. Yes? Toddy? If you ever feel you want to get away from the camp and you don't want to face the crowd in there, come in here and talk to me. I'd like to hear some more about your family. Say, you don't know what you're letting yourself in for. When I get going about my family, I don't stop for a long time. Oh, <laughs> good. <laughs> oh, Lord, look at the time. If I don't get these boys out of here, I'll have the police in. <laughs> well, the not so bad, the simple sign, the bells will blaze away. The dark and rise and all the sun, the dawn and light to play. Oh, that is the energy to do the truth, my work is on the day. A brave and true, the Lord and mighty might, the Lord is bad. La, 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 la. Palmer, I'm ashamed of you. <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, I call for three cheers for our popular hostess, Miss Todd, our Toddy. Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! Hooray! Speech! Come on, speech! Speech! Thank you, gentlemen, and welcome to our American allies. Will you please get the hell out of here? <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night, Toddy. Good night, Pheasant. Good night, Captain. Good, Good night, night Miss Toddy. Good night. Good night, Good night. Miss Todd, and about those drinks. Thanks a lot. Good, Good night. night. Good, Good night, Good night Peter. Good, Good luck. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night, John. Good night, and thanks. Really, thanks. Good night. Good night, Toddy. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Visual target, couldn't miss. Where the heck were the fog boat? Don't tell me our escorts kept away, because if you do, you're crazy. It'll be hard, probably. Well, that's one target we won't have to hit again. Yeah, yeah you think they defend a target like Franklin. A bit different the last time we went to Franklin, remember? Yeah. It was over a year ago. Gosh, don't I just. Hello, Irene. Thanks. First time they used those rockets on us. Never been more scared in my life. You were scared? Yeah. Well, you didn't hear a noise like a machine gun coming from the co-pilot seat, did you? Yeah. It was my teeth rattling. Uh, Johnny. <laughs> Sir. Oh, Bill. Mail in? Uh, yes, sir. Anything for me? I checked it, sir, but there's nothing there for you, sir. Okay. Thanks. No dice, eh? No dice. I expected something today, too. Haven't heard for quite a while, has it happened? Nothing wrong, I hope. No, sir. Thanks, sir. Anyway, I wouldn't worry too much about it, because in a week or so's time, you're going to have the opportunity of finding out who Emmy is for yourself. You mean... I'm going home? Yeah, that's right. Oh, boy. How come? Seems they need more instructors back home with combat experience. I've been asked to recommend a combat pilot capable of taking charge of a special instructor's course. A majority goes with it. So I thought it's better send the best man I've got. Gosh, I, I... I don't know what to say. I'm gonna hate losing you, Johnny. Especially now when things are really hotting up. Yeah, I know. And the way I'll hate going, too. But home. Play ball! Hey, look, get Tiny running at the pitcher. 
Of course, you, you don't run towards the bowler in this game. No, you don't. That's stupid of me. He ought to stick to cricket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say, Joe, what? I... Uh, what you doing this evening? Oh, just taking Iris to the station dance. Oh. I suppose she'll turn out to be in love with some Englishman like all the rest. Yeah. Hey, Listen, I gotta tell you. Hey, no. Listen, Joe. What? I, I've got to call on the vicar. I'll come into town with you. The vicar? Yeah. Well, it's just, you know, the children's party they're giving tomorrow. For some weird reason or other, they put it all off on me. Well, do you wonder after that performance last time? <laughs> Uncle Johnny. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how about that story about the flying hippopotamus? <laughs> how do you dream things like all that? All right, all right. Kids like that, right. said, is it? Joe. What? I gotta tell you. Tell me but what? Don't tell the others now. I'm not gonna tell the others. What? What? They're sending me home. Play ball! Johnny, no! Yeah. Say, what do you mean, say? I ruined myself. Peter, Peter, who was it who sprouted wings? A, a huh? potamus. The potamus sprouted wings. That's quite right. He looked down, you see, and suddenly, there he'd gone and sprouted them. Yep. Potamus don't have wings. Well, this potamus did. Great big ones, too. Wingspan 200 feet. Where's the possum I fly to? Well, it was a nice bright day, so he flew towards the sun. Peter! That's very naughty. I know, that's what I told him. Naughty. You're an evil influence. You no, know, I think perhaps we'd better put the candy away in a safe place. Otherwise, we shall have them all eaten before tomorrow afternoon. Yes. <laughs> Lost. Nothing have I gained, but my true love I have lost. I'll sing and I'll be happy like the birds upon the tree. For since he deceived me, I care no more for he. Let him go, let him tarry, let him sink or let him swim. He doesn't care for me, nor I don't care for him. He can go and get another, but I hope he will enjoy. For I'm going to marry a poor, nice old boy. He can go to his old mother now and set her mind at ease. I hear she is an old, old woman, very hard to please. If slighting me and talking ill is what she's always done. Because that I was courting a great big ugly son. Oh, let him go, let him tarry, let him sink or let him swim. He doesn't care for me, nor I don't care for him. He can go and get another that I hope he will enjoy. For I'm going to marry a far nicer boy. I, I've been thinking. I don't know why you don't leave the old sourpuss to stew in her own juice. Well, I couldn't do that. After all, I, I do owe her a lot. In a way. Oh, look, you don't owe her a thing, and you know it. Looks to me as if things are the other way around. She's just a selfish old gorgon who thinks of nothing but a stomach. Don't let's talk about her. Do you mind? Okay, let's talk about you. Uh, I wonder if you'd mind if I, uh, if I asked you a question, kind of, uh, person. Truth game? Yeah, that's right. I've, uh, I've been wondering if there was any particular, uh, well, if there was any one guy you, uh, oh, you know what I mean, don't you? I do. And the answer is no. No one at all? No one at all. Not, uh, not even an Englishman? Not even an Englishman. That's all, brother. <laughs> Hello, gang. Hello, Johnny. Say, what's the flare path lit up for? Oh, some RAF Pathfinder types. The vert is here. Oh. Hello, Alan. 
Are you happy in the service? You bet, sir. Hello, Blueprint. Hello, Blueprint. Fanfare and nuts calling. Can I pancake, please? Over. Number two. Hello, Fanfare and nuts. This is Blueprint. You are number two to land. Circle field at 2,000 and stand by. Over. Hello, Blueprint. In nuts answering. Wilco. Hey, is there an old soak down there called Tiny Williams? This is Peter Penrose. Over. In nuts. Blueprint control. Remember your RT procedure. Yes, you old basket. This is Tiny Williams. Ha <laughs> ha. How are you? Yes, sir. Hello, Peter. Peter, this is Johnny Howlers, remember? Hi, Johnny. Make mine a large scotch and soda. Over. Wilco. One scotch and soda. <laughs> Come in. Go. Ah, thanking you. Ah, thank I love you, Johnny. Hey, Boy. give me that. That's not for you. Here, try some of this punch. What huh? do you got? A thirsty partner? No, Toddy's not here yet. I didn't bring anyone myself. Yeah. I figured I'd do better on my own. <laughs> Good hunting. Hey, uh, mm. get that. Hmm, I got it. I've had my eye on her all evening. Hmm. Luck, pal. Oh. Battery acid. Excuse me, do you know Keith Hardy? I've been looking for him. Oh, Keith. Oh, Keith Hardy. Oh, he's left. Left? Yes, uh, Can I get you a drink? Thank you. That's kind of you. Hello. Hiya, Keith, old boy. The very guy I've been looking for. Obviously. I tell you, it was just a piece of cake. One scotch and soda, large officer for the use of. Thanks, Johnny. Good to see you, Peter. How are you? Fine. Remember old Nobby, don't you? Sure I do. How are you, Nobby? Oh, I think so. Hey, you take this one. No, I think so. I don't touch it. No? no I'm too young. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, so you finally made Lancasters. Yes, sir. Even the old or ruddy air cards who couldn't keep us apart. Swell. What's it like being a pathfinder, Pete? Oh, not so bad. No future in it, though. Hmm? What's, uh, what's going on in there? Our station bands. Oh. Could we take a squint? Sure, take it away. The joint's yours. Come on up. Great. Good. Not bad. Hey, here's that little girl that used to live down the line. What's the matter, Iris? I think I want to go home. Do you mind? Iris, did I... did I do anything wrong? No, I... I just don't feel very well, that's all. Come on, come on, come on, break it up, break it up, a fine thing. I thought you were my friend. Okay, okay, Johnny. No, I never. When would you get in? Just now. I couldn't see you anywhere, so I picked on the handsomest man in the room. Well, I'm pretty, yeah. too. Get out of it. From now on, you're dancing every dance with me, see, dear? Excuse me. I hope he will enjoy For I'm going to marry a far more nice old boy It was fun, wasn't it? I haven't enjoyed myself so much for years Oh You going to do your Uncle Johnny stuff again this year? Yeah, sure, sure Oh What's the matter? Say, is there any way of bringing into the schoolroom? Well, we might, why? Oh, it's something I forgot to fix for tomorrow One of my conjuring tricks You know, old black magic, they call oh. me Oh, come on then if we get arrested, it's your fault. Okay. I wish you could have a little more light on the scene. You know, I, I think it's going to show. Ooh, I'm afraid you'll have to risk it, Johnny. It'll take hours to black out all the windows. Yeah, you're right. Okay. We'll risk it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miss Dodd. Not at all. Say, the hell is looks quite different in the moonlight. The old lion looks positively romantic, doesn't it? There's a very bad blackout in number three bathroom. You ain't got no soul. <sighs> I've seen moonlight before. I know. Tony. Uh-huh? I hate goodbyes, so I've been putting off telling you. But I'm going home. Oh, Johnny, how marvelous for you. I'm so glad. You can imagine what I felt when I heard. Yes, indeed. How wonderful for Mary to have you back. Yeah. Yeah, I guess she'll be pleased, all right. After the war, maybe you could come out to the States. Oh, well, we'll try. I don't suppose it'll be very easy. 
Then we'll come over here and visit with you. Golly, be swell, you know, to come over here to your golden lion. Just as ordinary tourists. Sit around there all day, talking, drinking. Not to have to fly. Don't you like flying, Johnny? Oh, sure I do. But in my own time, and not the government's. Well, just in case. Here's wishing you all the best. All the best, Johnny. You deserve it. Give my love to Mary. I will. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for a lovely evening. Oh, no. Thank you. I shall see you again, shan't I? Oh, sure. Kids party. Of course. And I'll be down to say goodbye to If I can. Then this is just good night. That's right. It's just good night. Daddy. Good night, Johnny. Thank you. Oh. What for? Lots of things. Johnny boy. I don't know yet. Well, get a good hope, Minnie. Here we go again. Oh, the camp town ladies sing this song. Do da, do da. Camp town racetracks five miles long. Oh, do da day. Why sing all night? Why sing all day? So, sir, good morning, Johnny. How's that? Well, getting set, sir. Guess I'm just a little bit out of uniform at the moment. My eyesight's not so hot today. <laughs> Say, sir, mm. uh, about that question of going home. Ah, what about it? Well, I was just wondering if maybe you couldn't see your way clear to putting some other guy's name in. Sure, I could easily, but what's the idea? Oh, I don't know as I'd be all that much good as an instructor. Oh, I sure you would, Johnny. What's the real reason? I don't know if there is a real reason, sir, but the crew's only got ten more missions. We're kind of accustomed to being together. And last night I, I got talking with some of the RAF fellas in the mess. And it occurred to me that if a guy didn't get here until the middle of things, maybe he kind of ought to stick around until the end. Oh, take much too long to explain to you now. Look, sir, I'll come in and see you after the mission. Hmm? Yeah, sure. You can see me anytime, you know that. You don't have to, but come anyway. Thanks. Hey, Johnny, wait a second. Give me a hand left. Oh, thanking you. And me thinking at last we had the opportunity to get ourselves a good pilot. Yeah. Guess you'll have to put up with them bad landings just a little bit longer. Them bad landings? Brother, yeah. what about them takeoffs? Since when did I ever do a bad takeoff? Well, you usually manage to miss the control tower, I'll give you that. Yeah. Suppose you think I'm a fool. Huh? Sure I do. Yeah. Only... Well, we got kind of used to you flying now, Johnny, and... I guess a good landing would kind of throw us off. What are you throwing for? Double dose? Double dose, here. Let me try, will you? Okay. Swell. Here. Let's see if our luck's in, huh? Double deuce, the target for today. Smacko right on the... Oh. <laughs> Smacko right on the target, all right. <laughs> I ought to autograph this, miss. Johnny. Here's Mark. Let's go. Gonna sing all night. Gwine to sing all day. I bet my money on the box he'll make somebody better on the way. What a charming boy that American is. Charming. I must say you're a very lucky girl. Yes. He's asked us both to dinner tonight, hasn't he? Did he say what time he was coming? I don't think he'll be coming at all. Oh, why the not? 
I told him a lie, and he found out. You know, Iris, dear, I don't want to be unkind, but I despair sometimes of ever being able to help you. Now, I took a lot of trouble to become friends with that boy, and just by using the ordinary little ways of politeness and charm, if you wish, I get him to like me very much indeed. So much that he called you a selfish old gorgon who thinks only of her stomach. What? He said if I had any sense, I'd leave you to stew in your own juice. And what's more, I agreed with every word he said. Iris, how dare you? I said I wouldn't leave you because I owed you something. I should say you do owe me something. No, I did owe you something. I don't any longer. Whatever I owed you, and I don't think it was ever as much as you said it was, has been paid back a hundred times over. I am going to leave you, and I'm going to get a job. And I'm never coming back as long as I live. Goodbye. Well, really. What exactly is a gorgon? Do you know, Miss W? I'll thank you to keep your impertinence for your bar cronies, Mr. P. <laughs> Iris! Iris! Miss Todd, Iris has gone off her head. She says she's going to leave me. Good. What did you say? I said good. That settles it. I shall leave myself. Good. Have you gone off your head too? It may interest you to know, Miss Winterton, you have only been tolerated in this hotel for so long because of Iris. As I seem to be the only friend she had in the world, I thought if I threw you out of this place, which heaven knows you've richly deserved time and again in the last six years, Iris would be in an even worse position than she is now. Or rather was, until she had the great good sense to walk out and leave you flat. Oh, I will make out your bill at once, Miss Winterton. And I may say nothing I have done for years will give me greater satisfaction. Morning, Miss Winterton. How's everything? Oh, go to the devil. Peter! Hello, Tolly. Come into my office, quickly. What's the matter with the old truck? Oh, never mind that now. How long have you got here? Well, I, I don't know exactly. My port engine's packed up. Why? Well, I don't know what good fairy brought you here at this moment, but it's providential. You've got half a minute to make a very big decision. Iris is leaving. Now, do you or don't you want to marry her? Uh, well, uh, Toddy, you, you see, it's, it's all um, very difficult. You see, I... All right, Peter, let me do the talking. Do you mind? I, mean, I thought about it an awful lot. I've known for a long time what's been the trouble between you two. The thing that's been holding you back has been the thought of David and me. Isn't that right? Well, I shouldn't have told you this in a hundred years. I mean, well, that's about it, yes. Peter, believe me, you're wrong. Dead wrong. Are you sure, Toddy? I wouldn't lie to you about a thing like this. I promise you, if I could go back five years now and choose again whether or not to meet David, whether or not to fall in love with him, to marry him and bear his child, I'd choose again to have things happen exactly the way they did before. No other way at all. But I can't understand you. There isn't anything to understand. I can't explain it, but any other woman in the world would tell you the same. Look, there she is now. Go on. Iris. Look, uh, could you, uh, and have you got a minute to, could... Peter! You haven't let her go. Well, Tolly, I couldn't stop her, I Well, don't... go after her quickly and tell her she's to stay here as my guest until she gets a job. And tell her the Gorgon's gone. And tell her... What? Well, tell her you love her and then see what happens. To the station. And please hurry. Please, I've, I've got something I must say to you. Well? Well, you see... Uh, 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 look, uh, a squadron leader's pay is 29 bob a day. Is it really? Oh, yes. And then with, uh, with, with allowances and a bit of fiddling, you can get it up to about uh, 31 and threepence. Really? Oh, yes. Yes, and then if you slip in a marriage allowance, of course, that, that's uh, different you. That's uh, about uh, 49 and ninepence a day. Marriage allowance? Yes, that's, that's what I was I'm trying to suggest. I, I mean, to ask you if, if, if... What are you trying to ask me? Well... Look, it hasn't altogether been my fault. I, I've been confused and muddled about things, but my feelings haven't changed a bit in the last four years. Not an atom. And I wondered if you could... What, Peter? Well, if you could take on 49 and 9 pence a day. Tiny. Oh, um, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Excuse me. Come outside, if you will. Excuse me. Well, congratulate me. Why? Don't I look any different? No. I'm engaged to be married. Who to? I'll give you one guess. And about time to... Now, look, Tiny, I want you to be the best man, I'd see? have murdered you if you hadn't. Well, I suppose this calls for a party tonight. You bet. Got any money? Good. Now, look, we'll get Johnny and some chats from this station. We have some, some of those types from 720. 720? 
Were they back from the med? Didn't you know? They're at Marston now. <laughs> oh, Prune's the flight commander. Prune? Mm. Good Lord, old Hitler's really had it now, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, here they are. Baker missing. He's Baker sighted, sir. Coming towards the field now. He's flying on three engines. B. Baker reports one engine cut, rudder half shot away. Elevator damaged and one 500-pound bomb stuck in Bombay. Bombay door won't close. Any advice? Hello, Johnny. Suggest you make a heading of 165. 165 and bail out over airfield. Bail out. Seven. Eight. Nine. What did it come? Sir, pilot reports crew bailed out, no accidents. The controls were not set to required course. Right. Exterior speaker. Hello, Johnny. Blueprint calling. Over. Go ahead, Blueprint. Climb to 3,000 feet and bail out. Over. And have a 500-pound bomb going off in Shepley. Not on your life. I'm coming in. Out. <laughs> Johnny? Hello, Johnny. Go ahead, Blueprint. Climb to 3,000 feet and bail out. That's an order. Hello, Blueprint. There's something wrong with my receiver. I didn't get that. Third time lucky. Here I come. Out. Gentlemen, children, now at this stage of the proceedings, I had hoped to introduce to you Captain John Hollis. Exactly. But unfortunately, it appears that he's prevented from coming here this afternoon. Uh, that is so, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, I know, children, but you must remember that he's probably on duty and that there are more important things in the world than entertaining you. However, I've been asked to introduce to you Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Joseph uh, Frizzelli, who will speak to you in his stead. Uh, Lieutenant Frizzelli. I'm, uh, I'm afraid I can't tell you any stories, kids, because... Well, I, I just don't know any. At least I, I can remember the three bears, but I guess you've all heard that one already, huh? I just want to say that on behalf of everyone at Havenny Field, it gives us all an awful big kick to see you having such a good time here this afternoon. And I only wish Johnny Hollis could have gotten along to see it. Because I know it would have given him a big kick, too. But uh, like, like the vicar told you, he, he couldn't quite make it. Well, kids, that's that's about all. I I guess you better start playing those games, yours. Only you. 
been friends with Uncle Johnny? That's right. What happened when the kid the bottom was threw into a sun? I don't know, kid. He didn't tell me. Peter, you run away and play? Mm. I heard what happened. I'm terribly sorry. Thanks. I, uh, I didn't tell the vicar because I... Well, I didn't want to spoil all this. I knew Johnny pretty well. Yes, I know. I know there's nothing I can say can make things any better for you, but... I can only tell you this. As long as this town lasts, he'll be remembered here. I'd like you to read this. And not now, later. It might help. <laughs> My name is Hank Navarre and I'm the leader of the band. And though we're small in number, we're the best in all the land. Oh, I am the conductor and we often have to play with all the best musicians you read about today. La 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 Please. Sorry, Charlie. Are you beautiful? Oh, you Americans. And you are AF. There's nothing to choose between you. <laughs> Good night, Toddy. Good Give night. me away of this chap. He's a bad type. And they're all bad types. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Good night, Colonel. Come again. <laughs> Thank you. Well, why not come to Chicago? Say you could fly over in a few hours. Yeah, Good what night. about all these gangsters? Oh, heck. Chicago's one of the most peaceful. <laughs> Good night, Good night. It's Good one night, of the most peaceful cities in the world. Good night, Wally. Compared to what the next one's going to be like? Rockets a thousand tons. Mark my words. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye, darling. Won't be long now. Take care of yourself. Sure. Good night. Good night. There you are. Take care of her for me, Toddy. Yes, of course. Don't talk to any strange men. Good night. Good night, Peter. Good night, Iris. Good night. Hello, Joe. Hello. I just wanted to give this back to you. Did you read it? Yeah. Is it yours? It belongs to me. How's that last part go again? Better by far. For Johnny the bright star, to keep your head and see his children fade. Yeah, that's it. Might have been written for him, mightn't it? I think it was. Well, thanks a lot. Good night. Good night, Joe. Well, hello. Thanks. Sounds like a busy night again. Yeah. Going back to the station. by far for Johnny the bright star to keep your head and see his children fed. <laughs>